Across the world, 8 million people watched live as Felix Baumgartner skydived from the stratosphere. But they didn't watch it on television. Why? The answer lies inside these offices with a billion dollar company that's only seven years old. Look at my pass. It doesn't even have my name or anything on it. Just kind of can zap doors and open them. And it's changing all the rules. Don't appear to have buttons on the lifts either. If you're under 30, oh, okay. the chances are it's part of your everyday life. It feels like 20th century man entering 21st century space. But if, like me, you're a bit more on the uh, mature side, it feels totally inexplicable. It's like being in a giant iPhone. But understand it, we must, because this place is revolutionising how we're entertained. It's YouTube. There's been a whole movement that people like me have not been aware of. Hey, guys. Hey there, Internet. Hello. This is what British people sound like. Hello, human people. Well, hello. I'm Charlie McDonnell. I've been making silly little internet videos and posting them here on this channel since 2007. Yesterday, a really awesome thing happened. My YouTube channel hit one million subscribers. That's incredible. Let's go. This might look like a bunch of kids messing around in their bedrooms. And, well, they are. But they have some of the biggest audiences in Britain. They've done it all themselves with a little help from YouTube. We made creativity uh, accessible to everyone. But this television for all will have far-reaching consequences for our culture. Much of the stuff that's actually put up on, on YouTube is rather embarrassing. It's shameful and be better off left in a cupboard. Sorry, you hate me, don't you? The internet has been a very, very bad thing for the professional creative community. No, 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 no. As YouTube hits one billion users a month, I wanted to know, is this the future or the death of television? And I have you guys to thank for that. Well, kind of, I mean, you know, I was the one that made the videos. All right, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. This young man is Jawed Karim. He's one of the co-founders of YouTube. And this is the very first video ever posted on the site. The cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts, and that's, that's cool. And on that piece of Confucian wisdom was based an empire, because less than a year later, the other co-founders released this. Hi, YouTube. This is Chad and Steve. We're the co-founders of the site, and we just want to say thank you. Today, we have some exciting news for you. We've been acquired by Google. Google had bought YouTube for $1.65 billion. It was taking an enormous risk at the time, because YouTube was almost certainly making massive financial losses. But by getting in on the biggest digital youth phenomenon, they were hoping to piggyback into the future. You can't do that. Go ahead. And seven years and well over a trillion views later, we've arrived. The idea behind YouTube is simple upload and share videos online, and millions do. Whether it's posting your comedy moments or a launch pad for global domination. Whereas others have taken the original tagline, broadcast yourself, at face value. <laughs> the internet is a wonderful place filled with different people and opinions and interests that truly reflects the diversity of humankind. Dan Howell is a video blogger. He's one of a growing number of people, usually under the age of 25, who make YouTube videos about themselves. Totally, yeah. Do you do this full-time now? This is my full-time job, yes. <laughs> and how, how does that work financially? I mean, are you able to make it pay? Yeah, well, um, how YouTube can earn people money is that there's something called a partner program. When you get a few thousand subscribers or just a video that gets a lot of views, YouTube will invite you to put adverts on your video and then you get, albeit a very tiny proportion, some of the money from the adverts that go to it. Can you tell me how much you can make from it? It's, it's reasonable. I mean, some people, you know, people that get like hundreds of millions of views a month, they probably get 
a lot of money, but it's still absolutely ridiculously less than sort of like the same amount of views would get for TV. Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a Perry Edwards inspired makeup tutorial. She's one of the girls from Little Mix and her makeup always looks amazing. I'm going to tell you about what I've been up to and stuff. Fortunately though, for your entertainment purposes, the stuff that has been happening in my life recently has been friggin' weird! Along with Dan, Charlie McDonnell and Tanya Burr are two of the most subscribed YouTube video bloggers in the UK. Just this week, two million people have signed to your YouTube channel, which makes you number one YouTube person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm number one YouTube person. Are you not? At all. I mean, there was a point in my life where I was the, the most watched person in, in the UK. It's, 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 a bit, it's a bit mad. I think that it helped me initially that I was doing celebrity inspired looks because people would search the celebrities like Kim Kardashian, I think is the most searched celebrity and I did like a couple of um, makeup tutorials inspired by her. And then when they got to me, they probably saw my personality would shine through my videos and I'd just be myself and people would like that so they'd subscribe. And these guys know exactly who their audience is because YouTube provides them with an extremely detailed breakdown. 72.6 percent of my viewers are female. 45 percent of those girls fit into the 13 to 17 year old category. Here we go, a 87.5 percent <laughs> breakdown of female. And what's your demographic? Who are your subscribers? Young girls um, who want makeup advice and makeup on a budget because I know that they're usually in school, my subscribers. Seven and a half million, that's pretty good. That puts you, if you were a TV channel, that would make you primetime BBC One. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, pick an obscure country. Norway. Norway, okay. <laughs> if we go Norway, I've gotten 768,733, exactly, with an 8.6% male ratio. And uh, there's a 1.2%, 55 to 64 age. You're, mass you're massive everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm here with the <laughs> old ladies in Norway. <laughs> this massive international fan base... We love Charlie! ...has not gone unnoticed, as YouTube is keen to build on their partner's successes. In the European headquarters in London... Hi, Jack. ..YouTube have built a suite of professional-level studios for the use of the most popular YouTubers. So where are we going now, Sarah? So we're entering the actual space here. This is where we have all those studio and production and editing suites. Partners can book these spaces right. um, as long as they have 50,000 subscribers. So this room is called Deep Focus, and yep. it's the largest uh, production studio. You must have spent a fortune on this space because it's pretty state-of-the-art. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. It's a huge investment. It's a way for us to show how much we care about creators and how much we're willing to uh, take them to the next level and really help them develop uh, their shooting techniques, their editing and lighting techniques, and really um, further enhance their production capabilities. Wow, look at this. This is great. What We're are you just doing? testing our new slow-mo camera we've just got in-house. So we can do really slow motion stuff, which is super cool. You've even got some, uh, I believe they're called books over there. Have, That's a yeah. bit old-fashioned. Yeah, these, these are props. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the space is like a playground for aspiring filmmakers. And then you just simply steer it with your phone. It's now you now you tilt the camera. Whoa. Oh, yes. That's now, great. Back. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, that's what it's designed for. It's studiedly anti corporate, like a student common room, somewhere to hang out with friends. I wonder if this is kind of like a, the best place that you're going to find to be creative. Collaboration used to be like a massive part of YouTube. Like a lot of people, when they started out, the way that you got, well, especially for me, like the way that I started to get viewers was from collaborating with people who had more subscribers than me. Um, and I feel like lately it's kind of dropped off a bit. With this creator space, it's kind of being revived a little bit. Why do you think um, YouTube and Google are putting so much investment into what you're doing? What are they getting out of it? Uh, this place has been really good to get everyone to come together and make bigger stuff because I think everybody knows, yeah. like, animators and musicians and stuff, so you, it, it's basically a, a, a film crew. I mean, that's what you're getting out of it, but what are they getting out of it? Because, you know, they're investing in... A higher channel. quality of content. Right. right. Yeah. Just their, their, their aim with this place, I think, generally, is to just buoy the quality of content. For the lame setup, do you think you are with them praise fellas? And a better quality of content will bring more viewers, and with them, of course, a higher revenue from the advertising for YouTube. As YouTube moves towards the future, understanding exactly how people are using it becomes essential for them to stay ahead.
Kevin Aloka is head of trends at YouTube. Can you hear me, Kevin? It's his job to make sense of the chaos that happens every day on the site. And through the magic of talking to a screen and being talked back to, I can interchat with him in California. How are you noticing the changing use of YouTube? How's it sort of developing for you as you watch it on a daily basis? Are you noticing new trends? I like to tell people that I'm no longer surprised at being surprised uh, because we're, you know, we're in the first couple of chapters of this whole story, right, uh, of this whole development. But I think if we're going to get specific, I think one of the actual behavioral patterns that we're seeing change is we're starting to see these people who have consistent audiences grow those audiences on the web. And that's not something that we really had in those first couple of years when, you know, uh, we had the, you know, uh, evolution of dance or, or Charlie bit my finger and these these very funny cute videos those things still exist and they're still a very rich part of this you know beautiful ecosystem of things but the new sort of world of this of so people who are trying to make you know businesses and do uh, professional creative things is still just starting to, to grow which is why you're investing money in it because it's 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 the what you see as the future so the studios and uh, the hangouts and all the rest of it yeah yeah and I mean this is this all comes from you know, this is not an agenda, you know, from a certain group of people. This is from when you look at the community and what people are trying to do, this is where they want to go with it. And we're trying to figure out how do we make that easier for them. It's not surprising that YouTubers are building their audiences because last year and for the first time, 13 to 24 year olds spent more time online than they did watching TV. Back in the studio, I found Dan collaborating on a new video. They were making an episode of filmmaker Ben Cook's YouTube series, Becoming YouTube. Hello, my name is Ben and this is Becoming YouTube, a series of videos I've made about people who YouTube. Just like YouTube itself, each video will have thoughtful, self-exploratory bits in which I've rounded up a group of interesting and opinionated YouTubers to say things like All of you want sex with me. And if all else fails, just get a lot of hair and they won't mind. In this episode, a fictional children's puppet from the 1970s is being remembered by famous YouTubers who weren't even born then. Dan, can you explain to me what's going on here? Well, they're doing a YouTube, but a different kind of YouTube to the kind of bedroom with a camera. Um, now, as has been said, everyone remembers where they were when they heard of, of Cheeky's sad passing. Where, where were you? Oh, God. Um, I was shopping, I think, and I dropped everything. I'd been buying a lot of eggs as well. So it was something I've always remembered when I think every time I drop an egg now, I'm thinking of that puppet. At a young age, um, my family actually didn't allow YouTube videos in the house. And then I went to military school and you're only allowed six personal items and I used them up with my six toothbrushes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, cut there then. And the other thing that's shocking is that it does seem genuinely funny. Yeah, well, I'd hope so. Well, the thing is, with, with TV, you can make it into a TV show and then it gets bad reviews, but on YouTube, if something's not funny, then it'll just get no views and fail from the ground up. And on that note, it's time for me to fail from the ground up. OK, I'll give it a go. All right, let's, let's go for it, yeah, yeah. I've never felt such performance anxiety. So could, could you tell me a little bit about your earliest memories of, of Cheeky? I have to make a confession, which is that my dad, he auditioned for Cheeky um, as a young actor, didn't get the part. So when he died, I was pleased. And, and finally, of course, his, his catchphrase, which, is which this we all... Right? <laughs> this is all right. This is perfect. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> obviously working out a lot of angst. Uh, his catchphrase, of course, we all, we all remember oh, it, but yeah. uh, it was, of course... Yeah, my, ha you know, my house is burning. <laughs> my house is burning, of course. <laughs> of course it was. One of the very last things he said, of course, before he was knocked down by that bus. <laughs> Awesome, and cut there. Cut, cut, Very, cut, good. Cut, cut, cut. Very good. You might think that what these guys are doing is silly or inane, but dismiss it at your peril, because what they're doing is affecting mainstream culture. And it's not what they're saying that's significant, it's how they're saying it. Cut for it. Ben Cook is a freelance journalist and is putting those skills into practice with Becoming YouTube to amass over 100,000 subscribers in just 12 weeks. Is there a different relationship with the audience, though? Because you have a, you have a very, I mean, you have a very immediate response. Yeah. I've, I've said before, I've said in Becoming YouTube, that, that uh, if, if sort of TV is a monologue, then YouTube is a conversation. And it is, I'll, I'll post a video, and you know, within seconds, I'll have people commenting on it. 
that relationship then extends into the product into the creative process the production process because the dialogue then ends up becoming the product doesn't yes. it yes 